Pro Football Weekly is breaking down the draft for all 32 teams. Right now we're looking at the team that had the first overall pick, the Indianapolis Colts. And we know one of their big needs, obviously, was quarterback with Peyton Manning being gone, and they filled that with Andrew Luck. But when you look at the, all the rest of the needs that they had, how do you think they did in terms of filling them? It's a bit of a mixed bag. I mean, it's not hard to see. You look at the, the board, the players that they, they got, eight out of 10 players on the offensive side of the football. So what we know in general manager Ryan Grixon's first draft is that he's learned a little bit from his predecessor, Bill Polian, who for years surrounded Peyton Manning with as many skill position players and as much talent as possible on the offensive side of the football. So I think he showed his wisdom by doing that. At the same time, defensive-minded head coach Chuck Pagano doesn't have a lot of new toys to work with. So this isn't an overnight thing. This is going to take time, and uh, this is where they stand at, as of now. <laughs> put Chuck Pagano's system to a test to see without these, without any new pieces and with the stuff they've lost if he can do something with that defense. When you look at the full slew of picks, what was your favorite? You know, I think getting Kobe Fleener at number 34 just fell into their lap was such a smart move. It wasn't, uh, uh, you know, it, it was not a big surprise. Obviously, they were very lucky to have him fall to him, but to be able to put Luck in that comfort zone from day one with his favorite target at Stanford, a guy who can stretch the field, a guy who can be very dynamic in the red zone. I thought it was a great move for them, and I think it, it really gets them in the right direction right out of the gate. Should bring back memories of Peyton Manning and Dallas Clark. You know, right away, you already know they have the chemistry similar to those guys did. What pick did you like the least? You know, I thought in the seventh round, and granted, it's a seventh rounder, so it's a bit of a flyer as it is, but Justin Anderson, an offensive tackle out of Georgia, just doesn't really do a whole lot for me. He comes in with injury concerns, very, very limited athletically. He's never going to be anything but a right tackle in this league, and he's not going to be able to stick unless he gets over the durability um, and, and finds a way. So that pick was kind of blah for me overall, but again, it's a seventh rounder. So if you're making you know, the biggest questionable picks in the seventh round, I think you're overall doing a pretty good job. When you look at their full draft, what grade are you giving the Colts? I'm going to give Mr. Grixon a B plus. I think he did a really nice job. I, I will say that this is going to be a boomer bust draft for him. I think that there's a lot of potential, but at the same time, I think there's some guys who come with some injury concerns, some other guys who come with a little bit of character questions off the field. So could be a home run. He's, he's kind of rolled the dice a little bit, but showed his wisdom, was very intelligent to work on one side of the ball, get that, build that up, strengthen it, and then they'll go from there. And it's not a one-year project fixing this and starting over with this organization. So you figure they went off this offense this year, maybe next year Chuck Pagano will get his toys. It won't be that long before the Colts are good again. That's a look at their draft. You can check out our grades on all 32 teams by subscribing to our YouTube channel. It's at youtube.com slash Pro Football Weekly.